clambering through dense foliage. This man is an internationally famous digital art creator. The chief representative of Team Lab, Toshiyuki Inoko. Team Lab is a collective of about 650 specialists from around the world that includes programmers, engineers, mathematicians, and architects. They collaborate as a team to create this. A surreal world of flowers blooming in profusion, just one of the installations in the digital museum he founded last year. It's like stepping into another dimension. The artwork responds to touch and is constantly changing. The animated life forms move freely from one work to the next. It's like a kaleidoscope where the artworks seamlessly flow into each other. Since opening in June 2018, the museum has gained international attention. It has attracted over 2.3 million visitors from over 160 countries and regions. Inoko is now working on transforming an Edo period garden into a digital art museum. Inoko sheds light on Japanese aesthetic sensibilities through calculations based on the laws of physics. In addition to his museum, he's now taking on a new challenge, creating an innovative exhibition in nature, a fusion of nature and digital art. Whoa! <laughs> Inoko's work is full of surprises. Today on Face to Face, a look into Japanese aesthetic sensibilities through the world of Toshiyuki Inoko. west of Tokyo. Takeo is a city rich in nature, providing Inoko with an ideal setting for his work. Meeting him face to face is our host, Robert Campbell. Hello, the man I've come to meet here today is an artist who is in the process of unloading an entirely new world, combining the Japanese aesthetic consciousness together with frontline digital innovation. I'll be asking him where his creativity springs from and where he thinks it's headed. Campbell, an academic who specializes in Edo period Japanese literature, has been looking forward to this day. Inoko-san. Hello, I'm Robert Campbell. It's a pleasure to meet you. This is such an incredible setting. A giant camphor tree and beyond a towering mountain. What is this place? We're in a forest at the foot of Mount Mifuneyama. This whole area was made into a garden back in the late Edo period. So this is actually a garden. I feel the existence of numerous temporal axes, which is why I wanted to put on an exhibition here. Mefune Yama Rakuen Garden was created at the foot of a rocky mountain some 160 years ago. Enshrined here is a sacred tree that is over 3,000 years old. Within this cave are ancient Buddhist statues. The whole area reflects the continuous flow of time. With only a month to go till the opening, 
Inacon is busy making preparations. Inokon brought Team Lab staff from Tokyo to join him in Takeo. Creative directors, engineers, The team members spent a month making preparations both day and night. This will be Inokor's fifth exhibition here. Last year's event attracted 150,000 visitors over three months. Inokor recently discovered the ruins of an old bathhouse inside the Garden Hotel. He is setting up an installation here. This will be his largest exhibition ever at Mifureyama with 22 artworks. What is he aiming for? Two months later. It's so mysterious. I found this place in ruins. Strolling through the mountains, you come across this concrete structure. You open the door and step into a dark space. The tension builds up and then... Wow! This is breathtaking. It's so beautiful. This used to be a bathhouse. Natural scenes are projected onto the numerous columns that look like they've broken through the ground. The cherry and nanohana blossoms of spring. Summer, morning glories, bellflowers, and sunflowers. A whole month compressed to just five minutes. Flowers blossom and wither, only to bloom again. The passing of time and the endless cycle of life and death that takes place at Mifuneyama unfolds within the ruins. Inoko was inspired by megalithic ruins of the past. It's as if they sprung up from the center of the earth. What exactly are they? I wanted to create clusters that represented a different time and space within these ruins. A slight change in the times led to the sudden closure of this bathhouse, which was left to rot. For several decades, it was as if time had come to a standstill. Meanwhile, the surrounding forest has continued to change with the imperceptible flow of time for over several thousand years. By placing this artwork within the ruins that exist among the forest, I wanted to create a space in which different spatial and temporal axes intersect and overlap. And now the images are suddenly transformed into cascading streams. This is incredible. I created a physically based simulation of water by calculating the interaction that takes place between the continuum of water particles. In this exhibition, Inoko focused on water. Water, he says, is a continuum of particles. Using computers, he calculated the movement of each particle to draw lines representing water. 
The inspiration came from the manner in which Utagawa Hiroshige and other ukiyo-e masters of the Edo period depicted rain. The idea of expressing rain with lines can be traced back to the ukiyo-e woodblock prints of the Edo period. These were then introduced to Europe, making an impact on Van Gogh and other artists who mimicked the idea of rendering rain in the form of lines, even though rain is actually made up of droplets. The expression of rain through lines involves a sense of the passing of time. Exactly. When capturing a certain moment in time, I think that people in pre-modern times perceived the flow of time to be slower than people today. I became fascinated with this idea of time and space. That's the main reason why I decided to express water as a linear flow, a continuum of water particles. Much of Inoko's artwork is influenced by pre-Edo and Edo period Japanese-style paintings. What first caught his attention was the perception of space. Japanese-style paintings tend to ignore the rules of linear perspective and are two-dimensional. Inoko believes that this reflects the distinct way in which Japanese people perceive space and attempted to demonstrate this with computer simulations. In Japanese-style paintings, distant and short-range views are depicted equally in detail as existing on a single plane of depth. It's up to the viewer to freely shift his or her perspective. Inoko first creates three-dimensional representations and then projects them onto a flat space. By doing so, he mathematically recreates the way Japanese artists used to perceive space. His next focus was on how people perceived time, giving as an example the unique way in which Hokusai captured the great wave. Inigo believes that the method of using lines to depict the movement of water indicates the difference between the Japanese and the Western perception of time. I believe the reason why Japanese-style painters perceived the movement of water in such a manner is because the flow of time was much slower than it is today. That's why they were able to perceive rain as a continuous line. So you use an algorithm to calculate the time and space between water particles? Yes, to render all forms of water in lines. Inoko suggested that they should have a chat in the hotel lobby. Wow, this is incredible. It's difficult to grasp the size of the room. There's no sense of direction. Countless numbers of lamps in a gradation of subtle colors are hanging from the ceiling. The lights, evocative of summer in Japan, respond to human interaction and are constantly changing. They may seem random, but the lamps are arranged so that they can be connected with a single stroke. The lights react to human presence, and in order to allow the light to be transmitted from one lamp to the next, the distance has to be calculated to form a three-dimensional arrangement. Were you always interested in artwork like this? I loved to create things, even as a child. I wanted to learn about the world. That's why I fell in love with both science and art. What sort of art? Tactile art? Actually, I was more interested in paintings, studying the history of paintings, even as a child. It seemed to me that it reflected the changes in how we see the world. This world continues to expand through science. I started to think of art as having the power to change the way we view that world. I was fascinated by this entire line of thought. 
From an early age, Inoko sought to understand the world through art and science. After majoring in statistics and probability at the University of Tokyo, he studied art at graduate school. In 2001, while still at graduate school, he created Team Lab together with five friends. Why did you decide to form Team Lab? How did this come about? After university, I went on to graduate school and was looking for a platform of self-expression when I happened to meet a group of people who each had a different field of expertise. We became interested in the idea of collaborating, transcending the differences in discipline to create a space that would enable us to experiment and create. We wanted to further our understanding of people and of the world through this collaborative, creative process. A work of art is usually considered to have the stamp of a single master or upcoming artist. But your work is nothing like that. This is something that I feel really strongly about. The Kano School, which was one of the most famous schools of Japanese painting in the Edo period, was a collective. Hokusai's Great Wave was also the result of a collaborative effort. With each step, from the draft sketch to the carving and printing, handled by a different artisan. So, the idea of an artist collective was the norm then. But nowadays, unless it bears the signature of one person, it's not considered to be a work of art. This is a common misunderstanding among people who are not creators themselves. Art collectives have been and continue to be valid and important in the art world. What you're saying is tantamount to casting a huge stone at the late 18th century concept of civilization that has prevailed in Europe, mainly in France. <laughs> the idea of using computers as a creative tool is common practice among people of my generation. But there are things that we can never create. Like, for instance, this garden. Through the merging of computer-generated art with nature, I hope to make people more aware of the passage of time, which is something that cannot be done in an urban setting. Inoko's artwork comes to life at night. He wants to show us a place he feels particularly strongly about. A pond, shimmering in light. A fantasy unfolds before us. It's like a reflection in a mirror. It's so beautiful. The small boat floats freely on the surface, interacting with the koi in the pond, causing them to swim or dance about. I can feel the spirit or life force of the koi. A pond buried deep in the forest has been given new life. We've climbed up high. Yes. After walking through a valley where 200,000 azaleas shine brightly, a gigantic rock comes into view.
This huge rock is probably tens of thousands of years old. By projecting images of flowers blossoming, withering, and then blooming again onto the rock, I wanted to create a gigantic sculpture symbolizing the cycle of life and death. The projected blossoms are native to the region, a whole year condensed into an hour. According to Japanese Buddhist belief, the Buddha is said to reside in all forms of life, both organic and inorganic. The idea of a rock as a never-ending source of life seems to be very close to this line of thought. And now, another artwork that reflects Inoko's reverence for the forest. Wow! A digital waterfall. I wanted to create something that emphasized the flow of time. Something that really allows viewers to feel time pass by. Inoko wants to convey the passage of time on a scale that transcends the human lifespan. The two have returned to the bathhouse. It's like entering a fantasy world. The old bathhouse provides a habitat for colorful flowers and exotic creatures. Would you like to color some pictures? Sure. Show me what to do. Select a picture. Right. I'll take this salamander. The two use a variety of colors. Mine looks creepy. I think it's nice. They scan the colored pictures and see what happens. Oh, look, there he is. The colored creatures become part of the digital artwork. This is amazing. I feel very close to my salamander. He's a cute little fellow. Can I touch him? Ooh, watch what happens when I step on him. No! The colors will disperse. Through this artwork, Inoko wanted to express the continuity of nature. All life forms are connected. Nothing can live in solitary existence, including human beings. I wanted to show how we interact with one another, how we're all connected. The artwork you showed me today, I believe that instead of regarding art as just an insight into society, you're more interested in stimulating society, raising awareness, shaking things up, creating change. I believe art has the power to throw light on the beauty that exists in society. It allows us to dream. The world is meant to be borderless. Life is a continuum. We are all part of this continuum. We are part of a continuous flow from the past to the present and beyond. Our very existence is the result of interaction and continuation. In order to survive, we have to consume other forms of life. We're all part of a continuum. I'd like to make people aware of how beautiful a borderless world could be. Let's say that by drawing attention to the beauty made possible through continuity, by establishing continuity as the standard for beauty, I think that in the long run, we will be able to influence human behavior in a good way. 
I believe that the beauty is the ultimate standard on which human behavior is based. So, if we can raise that standard to make people aware of the importance of interacting and connecting with one another and our surroundings, then I think the human race can evolve in a better way. As usual, we asked Inoko to write a kanji character that best describes his philosophy in life. But instead, he drew these illustrations. Inoko-san, you're the 51st guest on this program and the very first person to ignore our request to write a kanji. I'm both impressed and curious about your response. I try to avoid verbalizing my thoughts as much as possible. In fact, I try not even to think in words. I prefer to remain as non-verbal as possible and think without having to rely on words. I only express my thoughts in words when I have no other choice. I'm sure there are many things you have lined up for the future. Could you share one or two of them with us? Well, one thing I'd like to do is to create a borderless space within an urban environment. I'm thinking of a space that has no boundaries, a continuum of beauty, something powerful. I want to show people the beauty and power that lies in that type of borderless space. Sounds fantastic. Knowing you, you'll probably want to transcend national boundaries, reaching out across the ocean, or perhaps aim for synchronicity. Yes. I'm sure there are many places like this throughout the world where nature and people have continued to evolve together in harmony for centuries. I'd like to create a digital art museum suited to such environments while creating a borderless space within an urban environment. A vast space. Yes, and a powerful one at that. <laughs> well, good luck and thank you.